This year, I'm challenging myself to step outside of my comfort zone a bit, not only when it comes to my sewing projects, but also when it comes to more fully expressing my personal style. Hello everyone, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Over here I like to share my journey towards creating a magical life that's built by hand or second hand. And today I'm going to be doing that by recreating a look that I love but I've never actually tried out for myself. This year I'm challenging myself to step outside of my comfort zone a bit, not only when it comes to my sewing projects in order to level up my skills, but also when it comes to more fully expressing my personal style. And one particular look or style that I have loved for a very long time but I've never actually tried is a matching skirt and vest set. It's very nanny fine to me and she is one of my all time favorite style icons, but it's not a look that I ever thought I could pull off or that would actually work with my lifestyle. But that is all changing today thanks to the sponsor of this video, which is Long and Crafts. They very kindly reached out to partner with me on this video and gifted me with this truly incredible brocade fabric. Um, as an Aquarius, this is probably my favorite fabric that I've ever owned just because, I mean, it's it's kind of weird, but it's also really beautiful. It tells a story and it's completely one of a kind and unique. I have never seen anything even remotely like this for sale at my local big box fabric store. So if you would like to check out some more of their stunning fabrics, I have a discount code just for you guys that I will be sharing at the end of this video, along with some other details about this project, like what pattern I'm going to be using and the total cost breakdown. I know you guys really love seeing that. So if you are interested in seeing all of those things, make sure you stick around for that. But for now, let's start cutting our fabric. So I just finished up my morning creativity hour. So I've gotten all of my vest outer pieces and lining pieces assembled. If you're wondering what that noise is in the background, it's my two year old blasting us all with a cannon from her pirate playset. <laughs> yeah, is that funny? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to share, I got this lining fabric from my stash and I thought this perfectly matched this blue on the houses. <gasps> Next, I'm going to start assembling the vest pieces at the shoulders and then at the sides. I wanted to change it up a little bit though because I like it when vests have that little tie that kind of cinch it in at the back a little bit. And I think I kind of want to find some like black ribbon, maybe some velvet to tie a little bow in the back. I think that would be cute. And I do not have buttons for this and the skirt. So at some point today, some point this morning, I'm gonna have to sneak off to Joanne's. That's where I'm at so far. I don't know about you, but I always have the hardest time picking buttons. There are so many. <laughs> Got my ribbon and my buttons. And then this afternoon, I have just been plugging away at this vest and I got really in the zone, so I just completely forgot to film. Here she is, hot off the machine. Let me put it on so you can get a better look. Okay, so right off the bat, I accidentally flipped <laughs> my buttons and buttonholes. So it feels really weird to be buttoning it this way, which is not a big deal. But overall, I'm really happy with the fit. So when I was sewing together the side seams for my main fabric, I added my velvet 
ribbon. It's very 90s pottery mom, which if you follow me on Instagram, you know is my whole preferred aesthetic. I love her. So I'm very happy with how this has turned out. I am only gonna get started on the skirt a little bit today. I'll probably have to finish up the rest of it tomorrow, but I am just getting started on my waistband and yeah, I will keep you posted on that. Talk to you tomorrow. So I was able to join the sides of the front and back skirt pieces for both my main fabric and the lining fabric this morning. I'm back in the sewing basement and now I am about to start assembling the rest of the skirt, starting with the waistband. But I thought I would take a second to talk a little bit about how I added a lining because one of the things I think I take for granted a lot now that I've, I'm several projects deep into my handmade wardrobe is that there are skills that I've acquired that I just take for granted now, but when I was a beginner sewist, I had no idea how to do them. But if you were a beginner or you're just starting out on your own handmade wardrobe journey, you might not necessarily know. So I thought I would share that just in case you wanted to give this pattern a try and add a lining yourself because there isn't a lining included with either the sewing instructions or for the pattern pieces. So what I did here is I just cut out both the back and side front pieces in my lining fabric, the same fabric that I used on my vest. And all I did was just make sure to cut it about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch shorter than the pattern for the main fabric. And I also made sure to transfer any notches, things like that, so that I can line it up. So what I've done now is I have it pinned all together at the side so that it'll stay where I want it to. It'll stay lined up as I attach the waistband. I have them wrong sides together right now and I'm going to go ahead and start sewing the waistband and the placket per the sewing instructions included with the pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the waistband now, but but yeah, that's that's how I added a lining to this skirt pattern. As a baby beginner sewist, nobody ever told me and I didn't know. So I thought I would share here just simple sewing tip. So you can see here on the outside, I have this green thread that perfectly matches my main fabric. And then on the inside, I have the blue that perfectly matches my lining fabric. Guys, all I did for that was I just changed the color in my bobbin case to the blue that matched my lining so that both sides had a perfect thread match. In case you didn't already know that, hope that helps somebody. <laughs> project was such a fun one to work on because it's so different from anything that I already own or that I would sew for myself. One thing that I really appreciate about projects like these is that you get so much more bang for your buck in the sense that you get a bunch of different outfits. Obviously you can wear them together or you can mix and match them with different pieces in your closet. That's a big win in my book. And since I'm kind of planning my spring, summer, handmade capsule wardrobe, I've already come up with so many different ideas of what I can make to go with these pieces. And I love that because of this fabric, because it's so different, they are just unique statement pieces that I can use to dress up some of the other basics that I already have in my current wardrobe. The more I worked with this fabric, the more I truly fell in love with it. I just think it is so unique. It is so totally different from anything that you could find at a local big box fabric store. So with that said, I would like to thank Long & Crafts again for partnering with me and helping me make this incredible set. 
I love this fabric and if you are as obsessed with it as I am, you can find it linked in the description box and you can also use the code FABRIC10 to get 10% off of your next purchase. As for the other materials I used to make this set, I used the Taylor skirt and the Judith vest. Both of these sewing patterns are from Coralina patterns and you can again find them linked. Just know anything that I mention, if I can link it, it will be linked in the description box for you. As I mentioned before, both of these are pretty straightforward makes. However, the instructions do leave a lot to be desired if you are a beginner sewist or if this is maybe one of your first projects. They might just be a little bit too broad for you to follow and there's also no pictures or drawings, anything like that to really show you exactly what it is describing in the instructions. With that said though, I don't think that they were broad enough that you couldn't figure it out. I still think that you could make these patterns, especially since they're not too complex. And I think they turned out really cute. I would definitely recommend both of them. Okay, and I know you guys really like it when I do these cost breakdowns for all of my makes. So I'm first going to start with the brocade fabric from Longin Crafts, which was kindly gifted to me, but if I had paid out of pocket, $51.78 for the two yards that I got of this. Also, excuse me if I'm looking over here, I'm just checking my notes. And as I said, the lining fabric is also vintage and free to me. However, for the one that I found that is similar that you can purchase from Joann's, that came to about $6.99 per yard. And again, I got two yards of that. For the buttons, I used 12 total and they came like four in a pack, so three packs at $3.49 a piece. And lastly, I got one yard of that velvet ribbon, which was also priced at $3.49 per yard. So in just materials alone, the total cost of this skirt came to $79.72, which honestly I don't feel like is really that bad comparatively. However, as artists, you know I think it's important that we value our time, energy, and effort. Time is also a form of currency, so it's really important that we keep that in mind. I'm not paying myself for the labor that I am doing on these makes, but just because I'm not paying myself doesn't mean that my time, my expertise, the work that I'm doing doesn't have value. So if I were to pay myself the current market rate for somebody living in my area with two kids, like I have, that would be $24 an hour. And when you factor in the fact that this set took me about 14 hours to make, and that includes assembling the pattern pieces, cutting out my fabric, all that stuff. That brings the total cost of my labor to $336, which brings the grand total of this project to $415.72. And if you have stuck with me this far into the video, first of all, thank you. Second of all, I would love to know in the comments what you think this woman's backstory is and also what her name is. I've been calling her Gloria, but that just doesn't like, it doesn't really feel right to me. So whatever you think her story is, what her name is, I would love to know in the comments. But yeah, this fabric, it is so unique. I am obsessed with it. It rocks. She rocks. If you are as enamored with this fabric as I am, don't forget that code is FABRIC10 to get 10% off your purchase of this fabric or any of the other incredible, beautiful, unique fabrics on Lung and Craft's site. If you had fun sewing along with me today, then I would really appreciate it if you could give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's a simple way that you can support my channel and also make sure that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Another way you can support my channel is by checking out my Patreon. There you will find bonus content in the form of extra videos or blog posts, as well as behind the scenes sneak peeks or just what's going on in my day-to-day -day life. That will also be linked for you in the description box below if that sounds interesting to you. As always, I love you and appreciate you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video and until then, stay magical my loves. Bye!